So in the last lecture, we asked the question, under what condition do the average and the instantaneous uh, velocity or speed, for example, give the same value? When are they essentially synonymous? And the condition for that, and the condition that we're looking for, is to be able to calculate the instantaneous displacement or the time, is if the velocity is constant. If our velocity never changes, this is hopefully should make sense, then there is no difference between the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity. And that becomes important because if I want to calculate a displacement or a time or a distance, for example, and I want to know instantaneous values, for example, at five minutes into my trip, how far have I gone? Or how long will it take me to travel, let's say, 100 kilometers? Then I really need the instantaneous values. I'm looking at a particular instant in time or a particular displacement what will be my my time or my displacement and so in order to do that we need to have constant velocity and that's frequently the case so in the situation in which the velocity never changes that formula for average velocity or for average speed becomes a much more useful formula because it allows me to calculate at any time the velocity the distance or the displacement or the time sorry so let's take a look at an example of, of how that would work so let's put a person at the 75 kilometer mark and let's let him travel at a uniform 125 kilometers per hour for 3.25 hours. And we want to know what is his final displacement. So I'll show you two ways that you could think about this problem. And the key thing is this idea of uniformity of the velocity. So there's several ways you can say that something is traveling at the same speed. One way is to say constant velocity. Another way is to say uniform speed. There's a number of ways in which you can say or imply that the velocity of the object is not changing, and when that occurs, then the formula for average velocity is as good as the formula for the instantaneous velocity. They essentially become the same thing at that point. So let's take a look at everything that we were, we were given. First of all, and we're going to list out everything given over to the left here, just as we've been doing all the time. So our initial displacement is 75 kilometers. We're going to travel at a uniform 125.0 kilometers per hour. We're going to do that for 3.25 hours. And what I want to know is my final displacement. And I, I apologize, this is the initial displacement. So very carefully, you label the 75 kilometers as x naught, the initial displacement. And that's our question. What is our final displacement? Now, there's two questions you might have been asked. This is really important. You might have been asked the change in the displacement, or you might have been asked the final displacement. So you've got to be careful about what it is that you're being asked. The two will give you different answers, because the starting point was not at zero kilometers. Had the starting point been at zero kilometers, then the final displacement and the change in displacement would have given you the same value. So we have everything that we need for this formula and if you remember the formula for velocity is delta x over delta t and therefore we can break up the delta x into x minus x naught and this would allow us to then solve for x and then we'll just plug everything in so let's take a look at how that looks if we solve we multiply by t we'll end up with vt equal to x minus x naught and if we take that x naught over to the other side then we end up with the formula for finding the final displacement. And so in this case, what we need to do is to multiply the velocity of 125.0 by the time, 3.25, and then adding that to the initial displacement of 75 kilometers. So let's see how that works out. So we would take 125 times 3.25 plus 75 
and our answer is forty one point two five and of course n these two have no more than um, two significant figure three significant figures sorry and we can't go beyond the last place after the decimal so our final answer is going to be simply 481 and that's it oh apologize kilometers my mistake okay let's take a look at a second example so this is a situation in which we use the fact that the velocity was constant to calculate the final displacement of an object. But that's not the only thing that we might want to calculate. So let's take a look at the second example. In the second example, Jesse is running a thousand meter track. His maximum speed is 8.75 meters per second. How long will it take her to run the entire length of the track? Now it doesn't actually say that, her, that this is a constant speed, but it is implied in the problem that her speed is not changing that she will run at her maximum speed for the entire length of the of the thousand meter track. So just like we did in the last one, we want to identify um, some of the values. Now, one of the things is I was never told where the initial displacement was. So in this case, it would be assumed that her initial displacement is zero. So for this example, we would say that delta x was equal to 1,000 meters the maximum speed is 8.75 meters per second and the question I'm being asked is how long will it take for her to run? Just like it was in the last example you always want to write the equation without solving for anything I'm just going to say t here so that you can convey to anybody who is looking for example at an exam that you might be taking that you know the right formula okay so before you you mess something up make sure that you write the formula so that um, it's clear you understand what you were supposed to do even if you mess up the algebra at this point you still get partial credit for understanding where you were supposed to go with this now in this case we want to solve for t so I'm going to multiply both sides by t that's going to be v t equal to delta x and then I'm going to divide by V in order to get T by itself, to isolate T. So in this case now we can go ahead and plug in. It's 1,000 meters divided by 8.75 meters per second. and I get 114. Now if you notice I had five significant figures here, I have three here, so I'm only going to keep the first three numbers here. That would be 114 seconds. Okay, so just extremely crucial that you recognize that even though formulas that you are given are formulas for the average of that, of that um, quantity, those average formulas can be as good as the instantaneous velocity formula as long as the speed does not change or the velocity does not change during the entire course of the, of the question.